I heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Scout Fantasy Show. ScoutFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Scout Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. It's Dr. Roto. Get out the insurance cards. Get out the copay. The office is open, my friends. Some sad news today. The Cardinals have confirmed that Alex Reyes will indeed have Tommy John surgery. So um, this came out yesterday. Reports were that it was likely that this could happen. But today it's been confirmed. And this is uh, a big issue. This is a big issue. And I think we need to look at this on multiple levels. First, I think as a fantasy owner, it's a crushing blow if you've already had your drafts. So, for example, in my recent labor draft the other night, Jeff Erickson from Rotowire took Alex Reyes in the 11th round. I thought that was a pretty good pick. I'll tell you in round 10 or round 11, I was thinking Alex Reyes. So, if you've drafted at this point, you don't have him. He's done. I also think that pitchers are throwing too hard. They're throwers and not pitchers. And we criticize pitchers in fantasy in fantasy circles. Oh, Chris Sale, he lost a, a mile and a half on his uh, fastball. Well, maybe it will prevent an injury. Because what's worse, throwing at 93 or throwing at 98 and being out with a torn UCL? I mean, really. And I think kids today are throwing harder because they feel like they have to in order to get the big contract. You want the big contract, you better throw it 100 miles an hour. And if you don't throw it 100 miles an hour, there's no room for you on our team. Well, Alex Reyes is 22. Now, this doesn't mean his career is over. Far from it. A lot of people have come back from Tommy John surgery and have done amazing jobs. But it takes about 15 months. Don't tell me 12 months. 12 months is not accurate. 12 months is when they're pitching again. 15 months is when they're throwing better. 18 months is when they're sharp. So you're looking at right now, next All-Star game, when he's throwing the way you want him to. And somebody will inevitably, will inevitably take him in a draft and put him on a reserve squad for next year. And you know what you're going to get? Nothing next year until about the All-Star game. But I think this is a problem. I do. I think this is a problem. And I think... People who play seasonal fantasy sports, injuries crush their hopes and dreams, right? We play seasonal sports. We love them. We love to watch our players. We love to root for them. But when our guy, when our guy gets injured, it's, it's like popping a balloon. It's deflating. Oh, my season's done. It's over. Man. Oh. Doesn't that sound like you or somebody you know? Now, why is daily interesting? Well, if Alex Reyes doesn't pitch that day, I'm not interested in Alex Reyes. I'm interested in Alex Reyes every fifth day when he pitches. So, a daily player, you know, if Alex Reyes is out, doesn't really bother them. Just something else that they need to uh, factor in when they set their lineups. So, I think these injuries turn people's interest to daily fantasy more than seasonal sometimes. And I know, and I'd said this before, I mean, I've been wildly successful in fantasy baseball for, I don't know, 25 years now. Last year, I had my worst year. Last year, I had my worst year ever, I think. I mean, except I didn't even have a bad year. The first year I started playing was this year. Was the worst, last year was the worst one ever. Because I had these, in, these decimating injuries. You lose A.J. Pollock. You lose guys who are, who are going in for Tommy John surgery. I, so you're doing like six, seven drafts. You're like, oh. My teams stink because a lot of times you'll take the same guy and you'll put him on multiple teams because if you like him once, you want him all over the place, right? So it's been a big problem. If I lose Alex Reyes and I have him on four different rosters out of my six, I pretty much have lost a big piece of my my rotation. So I wish that baseball can figure it out. I wish that pitching coaches wouldn't force kids to do things too soon. Alex Reyes is 22 years old, man. And for him to go in with, with, with Tommy John surgery at this age, 
is just crushing to me. And they do it because they want the big contract, they want to be famous, they want to be the guys in the rotation, but how many guys can do it? Do you remember Greg Maddox? Location, location, location. Remember Tommy Glavin? Location, location, location. They never threw hard. They threw smart. Greg Maddox would have three to five strikeouts a game. You know what we call a guy like that? Oh, I don't throw a soft tosser. Soft tosser. Guy throws 91 now. You're like, oh, he's going to get lit up. He doesn't have the steam. Well, how about some developing some other pitches? How about a split finger fastball? Mariano Rivera never threw it 98 miles an hour, but that guy could get everybody out. That's a first ballot Hall of Famer. So I'm very upset today. I'm upset for Alex Reyes. I'm, ex- I'm upset for Alex Reyes' owners. I'm upset for anybody who roots for Alex Reyes. And I'll tell you something. I'm telling you something. The World Baseball Classic, I think we see a major injury as well. Now, I don't root for injuries. I never do. But would it shock you to see an injury in the World Baseball Classic of another young star player? And it's going to make me sad to see that happen. Because I just want, as a fantasy owner, I want my guys to make it healthy through a season. That's all I ask. I say this. If my guys stay healthy, really good chance I'm going to win and be very competitive in every league I'm going to be in. I feel strongly about that. I may not win every league, but I'll be certainly very competitive if I can stay injury-free. And that's crucial. All right. Let's continue on with our team podcasts. I promised you the south side of Chicago with the Chicago White Sox. And I just have two words for this team. Dumpster fire. I mean, this team's got issues. Now, I think that they're planning for the future. Yoan Moncada didn't show a lot, but he's a top, maybe the top prospect in baseball. Lucas Giolito, Michael Kopech, Ronaldo Lopez, Carson Fulmer. These are guys who might be able to be difference makers, but not anytime soon. But the White Sox got rid of Sale. I'm surprised they kept Abreu. I'm surprised Todd Frazier's still there. I think he'll be gone too. At some point, he'll be gone. Maybe Melky Cabrera as well. I think this team's got got issues. At catcher, is it Giovanni Soto? Omar Narvez? I mean, who is the guy? And even if I knew who the guy was, do I want any of these guys? I think they pretty much stink. I guess Omar Narvez is going to be their guy, but I mean, we're talking about a guy who could hit, I don't know, 250 with no power? Please don't draft him. Unless you're in a 50-round draft Champions League when my partner said to me, what do you think about Omar Narvez? I'm like, what? Now, Jose Abreu is obviously their best hitter. But here's something very interesting about Jose Abreu. Have you noticed in the three years that he's been in baseball, he's gotten worse? He was better three years ago when he had 36 home runs and 170 RBIs. And it's 31, 101, 2,500. It seems to just get worse. And runs scored? How many runs is he going to score? Considering nobody behind him can hit. But yet they want to keep Jose Abreu and build this team around him. If I'm him, I don't even want to be there. Brett Lowry Roto, one of the original Roto children, and I think he's a poster child for being overvalued in drafts. There was a time, was it in 2011 or 2012, that this guy was going in the third round? What has he ever done to show that? Oh, Brett Lowry, he could go 2020. No, he can't. Seriously, no, he can't. This guy can't stay healthy, first of all. He's crazy. Seriously, he's a little nutty. I, I don't see how this guy goes 2020. I guess if I'm in an AL only league, I'll take him. If it's anything more than that, I'm not, I'm not really interested. I'm trying to see here. Did, where did he even go in my league? In the, in the labor draft. Oh, Brett Lowry. Round 25. Seriously, round 25. What does that tell you? It tells you that even 15 experts couldn't find any love for this guy. I do have love for Tim Anderson. He, in fact, might be my favorite Chicago White Sox. This is a very young, very good, very fast kid with significant upside. I think he can hit about 280 this year. I see him with 10 to 15 home runs. I see him with about 20 to 30 stolen bases. I I see him leading off. I like him a lot. I like him a lot. 
I think this is a guy who is a, a difference maker. And I'm a fan. A big fan. You want to draft him? You have my ultimate blessing. Go ahead. Todd Frazier. Still getting it done. Not a high batting average, but he still hits the ball out of the ballpark. Had 40 home runs last year, 35 the year before, 29 the year before that. The stolen bases are still there, somewhere in that 10 to 20 range. I mean, you're not going to get a batting average, but you're getting power. So imagine Mark Trumbo with a little more speed. And he plays third base. So I'm still okay on Todd Frazier. I'm still fine on Todd Frazier. I'm trying to see where he went here. Todd Frazier went in round five. Uh, probably a little too soon for my liking, but because I don't like the team, but I have no problem. The outfield's where it's an issue here. Now, I'm going to give you a name that you may never have heard of, Charlie Tilson. It looks like right now they want him to be their guy. And in AAA Memphis last year, he showed that he could do a little bit. Okay, he was a second-round draft pick, hit 282. And 351 at-bats, four home runs, 15 stolen bases. So I think they're looking at this guy who is a 260, 265 hitter. You know, three to seven home runs. I'm thinking Ender Inciarte. That's, that, that's who he's, his, his comp is to me. Not a bad player. Very undervalued. And if he could do that, I think the White Sox would be very happy. Not a, not a Milky Cabrera guy at all. I think they're definitely going to move him. If Melky Cabrera starts out hot, he'll absolutely be moved. All right, he's in the last year's deal. He's gone. Okay? So will it be Reimer Liriano? I'm waiting for Reimer Liriano to be good. But that's why they're talking about Yoan Moncada maybe playing in the outfield. Because if you've got Laurie and you've got Frazier, you're going to have Melky Cabrera getting out there. So there are a lot of people think that he has a skill set, Moncada, which could be an outfield skill set. I don't know about that. We'll have to see. Abisail Garcia is the other guy in the outfield. He's 25, but we feel I feel like we've been talking about him for like 10 years. But he's only 25. But they signed him to a one-year deal, $3 million. Let's see if this kid can hit. This is a guy who's never really hit 15 home runs in a year, but we've always talk, spoken about him. Oh, this guy could be good, but he hasn't been. But if you want to draft Abisail Garcia... At the end of your draft somehow. Right? If he's a guy that you're looking at late in drafts, I have no problem with him. If he's my seventh outfielder at the end. Is he good? Not particularly. But if I'm in an AL only league, I'm certainly using him. And in a mixed league, he's my, he's my seventh or eighth outfielder. Okay. So David Robertson's the closer, but I think he can be traded at any time. Whether it's a Nationals or another team, I think Robertson's gone. If Robertson leaves, Nate Jones is the most likely closer. But Nate Jones is no kid either. He's 31 years old. But he's a very good pitcher. Okay? And now take a look at a guy, a young guy named Zach Birdie, B-U-R-D-I. He's another guy who might just be interesting. He pitched in AAA last year, 16 innings, 22 strikeouts. Did have 11 walks. I don't like that. But this is a guy that I know the team is high on. Watch him in the spring. I think Nate Jones is the one. Patrick will be there. Dan Jennings will be there. But keep your eye on Zach Birdie. I think if Nate Jones performs well, he could go at the deadline. I think David Robertson doesn't make it to opening day. And Nate Jones ends up on... I don't know. Give him, you know, think of a team who's going to be the Dodgers. I'm just giving you an example. The Giants. Some team who's competing will take a Nate Jones. And then Zach Birdie may come right up and be the closer. It's possible. The rotation, I like the first two guys in the rotation. Jose Quintana is a very good pitcher. Uh, I, 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 I don't like him as much as other people do, but I like him. 181 strikeouts to 50 walks. 13 wins. Pretty good ERA. Pretty good whip. I mean, he throws a decent number of innings. I like him. But the guy I really feel is special is Carlos Rodon. I think he's a special talent. And he's going to increase that workload. He still lets up way too many hits, for my liking. And he still has too many walks. But the walk-to-strikeout ratio is better. It's now 3-1. to one. A year ago, it was 2-1. 2-1 to one. to one doesn't fly. 3-1 to one is okay. I'd like to see even better. 
But Carlos Rodon is a difference maker on the mound. He's only 24 years old. So this is a guy who could absolutely improve. He's going in like the 13th, 14th, 15th round of drafts. I, I'm, all, I'm on board with that. I am. James Shields is still there. I, I think this guy is batting practice fodder. I hate him. He's 35 years old. I implore you not to draft him. I don't like Miguel Gonzalez. I don't like Derek Holland. I think these guys are placeholders for Giolito, Ronaldo Lopez, and Carson Fulmer. These are the guys who should be up at some time. Okay? Carson Fulmer had a whiff in the majors last year. He was disgusting, but he's still a good talent. Lucas Giolito is a very, very good pitcher. Once again, he didn't perform exceptionally well last year in his cup of coffee with the Nationals. I'm not worried about that. And I love this kid, Ronaldo Lopez. I think this kid is showing me some stuff. He's 23 years old. He's got, I mean, these are guys that Gonzalez, Shields, and Holland hold a place on the staff for three, these three other guys who come in and probably at some point make a big, make an impact. Now, I think the key to this season is Moncada. They gave up a whole lot for him. They gave up a whole lot for him. And this is a guy who, you could argue if he can start to hit, could be hitting 10 to 15 home runs and stealing 30 to 40 bases. This is like a Starling Marte kind of guy. I mean, he's a good hitter. So he's 21 years old. He's 21 years old. So he is the future that you can build around. Where is he going to end up position-wise? I'm not so sure. But I know with Moncada and Anderson and Abreu, that's a pretty good starting point. I could be a Breu, Moncada, Anderson, Frazier, Charlie Tilson, and I can work with this. Quintana, Rodon, Giolito, Lopez, Fulmer. We're, we're creating something there in Chicago. It may take some time, but I think it's something to watch closely. It might just evolve into something pretty decent. And you know what else is something pretty decent? ScoutFantasy.com is. Enter the promo code ROTO, that's R-O-T-O. You pay for one month, we'll get you two more for free. You'll get access to the team outlooks by Sean Childs. Our rankings, my own, with Adam Ronison and Sean. You get PGA. You get NHL with Cappy and Kick. You get the NBA Optimizer. You get Nate Weitzer, who does NBA. You get a lot of people helping you be the best players you can be because we are winners at the highest levels. I'm not talking about the Hooters Home League, guys. I'm talking about expert leagues. Ronis and I and Sean are in labor and tout. Best baseball leagues you can find. We're winning high stakes football leagues all the time. You got to think like a high stakes player if you want to make money like a high stakes player. And that's what we do. So please check us out. ScoutFantasy.com. Promo code ROTO. Pay for one month. Get two more for free. All right. When we're back next, the Cincinnati Reds. We'll discuss them. We'll take a look at what they look like now that Brandon Phillips is gone. I promise we'll do that on our next podcast. But for now, have a great day. Be well. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Scout Fantasy Show. There's never been a better time to join the Scout Army. Visit ScoutFantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO for two months free. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time. Go Scouts!